Our next guest is a Cuban-Australian who's been one of the top welterweights in the UFC for quite some time. He's currently preparing to take part in a star-studded ADCC this August. Hector Lombard, welcome back to Submission Radio, man. Thank you, brother. It's great to have you back on the show, Hector. Now, uh, something that Aussies have been excited for, uh, the rumours that you're looking at returning to the international judo in hopes of representing Australia in the 2016 Olympic Games in Brazil. Any truth to, the, any truth to that rumour? What's the latest? I mean, the rumour is true. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to compete in nationals because uh, uh, it was kind of like too soon. And... Uh, you know, I, I won't be able to. I won't be able to go over there because I have a. I have a um, few few BJJ competitions up here um, that I already signed for. And, right, right. Uh, so the- I need, I need, I need, I need that for uh, for uh, the for the Abu Dhabi as well. But um, you know, I I believe that in the in the next few months I'm, I'm gonna be able to uh, do a lot of competitions internationally. Yeah, so just uh, because I guess most of our listeners don't really understand how it all works, you don't need to go to the internationals to make the Olympic team, do you? You can still make the Olympic team by doing competitions later on and making the team. Is that right? Uh, it depends, it depends uh, what, what type of competition you do. I mean, uh, if you uh, 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 win or take, play, or, you know, take place in a, uh, very important competitions uh, in Europe and uh, around the world, you automatically will be um, qualified. Okay. Now, we imagine you'd be obviously a busy guy. You want to you wanna compete in, in, uh, in judo at the Olympic Games. I'm just curious, what, what was the motivation? Why did you want to compete back in the Olympic Games? You've been doing MMA for so long. You've got the mm-hmm. ADCC coming up. Why, why judo? Why go back to the Olympics? I want to prove that I, I don't need, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know what's recently happening with me and... Uh, uh, the situation with the UFC. Of course, yeah, and, the suspension. Um, I just want to, I want to, yeah, I want to prove that uh, I don't need anything uh, to, you know, to compete at the highest level. And, um, you know, I feel great. Um, yeah, no, for sure. You know something, Hector, on this very episode, we've got Dan Lambert on the show as well, who's obviously the owner and founder of American Top Team. And, you know, we had a bit of a chat about your situation. And he said one of the biggest things that bothered you wasn't the suspension, but the idea that people out there thought that you were a cheater or that you took steroids. You know, would that be an accurate would that be an accurate statement? And, you know, how difficult has it been for you with some of the backlash that's come from the suspension from fans? Well, uh, before before it happened, before it happened, they never believed. They never believed that I that I was a. a, a they they always believed that I wasn't something, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Just because the way I look and uh, um, just you know my physical appearance. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was one of the harder things that I haven't been going through, um, and I've been through a lot. But uh, uh, and, and that's what motivated me to uh, uh, stay long in the game because. I want to prove that I don't need none of that to, uh, to compete at the highest level. Sure. And when we spoke to you last time, you know, we asked you fantasy matchup. Who would you like to face on the big November card in Melbourne, Australia? And you said GSP, you know, and the media got it and uh, it, it, it did the rounds. People thought that if you had fought and beaten Rory McDonald at UFC 186, you could have fought for the title on that card. How disappointing was it for you that knowing that you wouldn't be able to compete on that card now, the big uh, Melbourne card? Yeah, I, I, it feels that uh, you know, I felt that I lost everything in uh, in one in in, in one go. Mm. You know, mm. um, you know, this, you know, I I, I I was stupid. I you know, I shouldn't I shouldn't you know listen to anyone. And it's funny because uh, Joe Rogan make a comment about about like oh you know that you know that pill is being around forever. Like how come he you know went with that? You know, you should. Or he wanted to, to go around the system, or or he, you know, he wants to beat the system. I didn't want to be no system. I mean, I thought that that pill it was, you know, to make me feel better, and uh, you know, obviously it didn't. Um, but um, I will prove once again that um, you know there is Hector here for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, obviously, we all know what the story was. One of your fellow Olympians uh, passed an pill to you because you were sick and she didn't tell you that it was an illegal pill or anything like that. Just wondering, what was your interaction with her like when you found out what she gave you, you know, turned out to be, you know, a, a PED? What, are you still friends with her? Did, did you did you sort of have a go at her? Like, I mean, you would have been pretty angry at her for passing this pill on to you, I mean, wouldn't you? 
how how can be how can be friend with a person that you know destroy me? I mean, obviously she says that she didn't know about it, um, but you know, reality is like I lost it all, and I got a be fine. I got I got the biggest the biggest suspension ever. I mean, I, you know, obviously they they, they prove they, they they prove a point with me, um, but. I gotta take it as a positive way, and uh, thanks to that, coming back to do a lot of things, uh, have the opportunity to compete in the in the Abu Dhabi. I always wanted to do that, mm. and without without this situation, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, um, or I wouldn't think, I wouldn't thought about about competing in Abu Dhabi this year and stuff like that. So it's a new journey, new journey that uh, that I gotta go through. It's in- yeah, I was going to say, it's it's interesting that because of this, this has led you to go to the ADCC and to want to compete in the Olympic Games. I mean, that's something that I don't think anyone would have seen coming. You know, just going back to sort of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dan Lambert mentioned that, you know, another thing is they've changed the rules and that first-time offenders for any kind of illegal drugs will be getting three years as opposed to nine months or, in your case, 12 months. I know this is an unfortunate situation, but is part of you relieved that it happened earlier as opposed to now, when you would have, you know, potentially missed out on three years of your career? Oh, of course I am. I mean, like three years of my career, it would be it would be devastating. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a younger fighter, mm. and uh, you know, three years, uh, I basically would be gone. You know, I would be, I would be doing something else. You know, but um, yeah, it's you know, I, I kind of like I'm I'm a bit relieved about that one. And um, you know, I only, I only, it's like six months ahead of me again. So I'm basically almost there. So I'm gonna be competing in a lot of grappling competitions, and uh, and then I'm gonna compete in the Abu Dhabi. And next thing that I know, I will be back in the in, in the UFC and will be back and fighting again. Um, but you know, this is this is uh, an experience, and I want I want the young younger fighters out there um, be more careful. And don't do not trust anyone um, to give uh, any supplements, any drinks, and and take this very serious because you know they can screw your career. You know, and uh, it happened to me, um, and it can happen to anyone. It's funny because uh, um, you know when the football teams up here, they go they go for um, for uh, big games or whatever. They don't they don't eat at the hotel. They they go out. And and they eat outside just because they think that they can make they can make something happen. They can make put something in the food and stuff like that. Um, mm. And this is this is the approach that we have to take today. You know what I mean in MMA because it's a big fine. It's it's a long time, and it would be devastating for for anyone that you know um, to get caught. You know, um, so I'm I'm, I'm just kind of like from my experience, do not do not trust anyone. Uh, from from my experience, don't you know? Um, don't let any drinks outside open or whatever. Just uh, be careful. Be like uh, you know, um, really careful with you know the stuff that you know you live around and stuff like that. Uh, before I, I used to um, leave my drinks outside and uh, and uh, I was I wasn't very conscious about that one. But um, now after all this, you know, I I I even leave leave my drinks in in the car. My wow. checks and stuff like that. I live in, in my truck because you don't know what can happen, you know? Mm. Yeah, and if, if anything, I think, Hector, I think you're spot on the fact that a lot of athletes are going to learn from this experience. And uh, even though it's a negative thing that's happened in your career, a lot of people will benefit from learning uh, with, you know, what could happen if you're not careful. Just wondering, obviously, your opponent, your initial opponent, Rory McDonald, is now fighting for the title against one of your fellow teammates in Robbie Law. Uh, Johnny Hendricks is up there. He, you know, he's beaten up Matt Brown. How difficult is it for you to watch what's happening in the welterweight division knowing that you were so close to getting that title shot? Yeah, um, uh, it's, you know, it made me cry sometimes, but um, it is where it is. I mean, I believe that everything happened for a reason. And um, uh, it's like you say, what if, if I would have, the same thing that happened to me, it would have happened. Um, Two or three months after, mm. I would be I would be gone. So yeah, rather than I know I'm gonna get back. 
I know that um, I'm going to be fighting soon and uh, I'm going to be winning. Um, but, but what they were saying me the most is uh, I, wanted, I wanted to fight so bad in the, in the Melbourne card. Um, mm. You know, um, and, and all that is gone. You know, um, I fought so many times in Australia and, uh, you know, a lot of people were excited about it. And, you know, obviously it's not going to happen now. But um, uh, next year, next year, you know, I think that I will have a big year ahead of me. And, and stay positive, and uh, and I definitely, I definitely need to write a book, you know, um, for everything that's been happening to me and uh, how my life, we, you know, start and fighting all that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Hey, you know, I think it'd be great if you wrote a book. And you know, the good thing about the Australian card, I mean, Melbourne's going to be most likely such a big show. They're probably going to do it at least once a year or multiple times a year. So I'm sure you get your chance in the future. What I'm curious about, though, is once your suspension is up, you know, it's not that far away. But when you return, you'll be 38 years old. You know, a lot of fighters start to slow down or retire around about the age of 40. How long do you see yourself competing for? And do you have a certain age that you think you might retire, Hector? Well, um, you know, I, 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 I don't call it luck in my career, but, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, when you get, when you get a lot of beatings in your fights and stuff like that, uh, you go through a lot of knockouts and stuff, um, you slow you, slow you down, but as long as you're healthy and, uh, as long as you haven't, you haven't taken that beating in, in, you know, in, in, you know, through fights, you know, I think that, you know, you're still a younger fighter. And I call myself a younger fighter for that reason. I mean, my reflex, my reflex is still there. My my strength is still there. And um, I, I mean, I've, I've been doing judo and uh, wrestling and grappling with all these guys. And uh, I feel better now than than, than last year. Mm. Um. So um. Don't know. I mean, you know, it's you know when you know who knows when when I will be able to finish. But when I'm gonna be finished. But um, right now I feel great. Um. There's there's few people um like um Brandon Hawkins you know he's like 50 years old he's still fighting yeah um Joe Foreman and all these people they they were like over 50 they they still fighting I'm not saying that I'm gonna still fighting to, you know when I'm, when I'm 50 but I believe that um even my hunt you know he's like 42 mm. and I still fighting yeah yeah I mean I, like like I said I mean um I feel I feel young I mean training all these younger guys at the gym and uh, feel faster than them and feel stronger than them. So um, right now, for me, that's not even an issue. Um, I'm not even thinking about that at the moment. But um, trust me, when 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 you see at the gym, like the strength is not there and uh, the power is not there, the reflex are gone, yeah, it's time, it's time for you to uh, call it a date. Because everything happened in the gym first, you know? And... Um, once I start happening in the gym, uh, I'm definitely gonna start thinking about about uh, retirement. But um, at the moment, I feel better. Uh, I feel better than, than 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 everyone at the gym, to be honest. Well, yeah, absolutely. And we, we we've been monitoring your Instagram. You've been kicking some ass in the gym, so absolutely, you've been looking good. Now, let's talk about ADCC. You're a former Bellator champion, obviously, a former Olympic athlete. What would it mean for you to win at ADCC? Well. I definitely that's that's ma- that's making history right there. Uh, you know, I I'm just happy to compete and uh, perform and and gain more um, experience in uh, all the disciplines. Um, I remember back in the days I competed in kickboxing in Australia, competed a few times in Melbourne, and um, I always wanted to uh, do things you know abroad in the game, like whether kickboxing <clears throat> or uh, competing wrestling or judo or grappling bjj um so the, the more i compete in all the areas um it's always going to be good for um for the, for for mma yeah and, um, but yeah definitely you know if you win that it's going to be like um it's going to be the happiest moment and, you know mm-hmm. after all after for all that i've been through this year you know at least i will get a little bit of uh i'll get a little bit of uh satisfaction yeah, for sure. Well, it's going to be a huge deal. And if you return, well, sorry, when you return to the UFC, you know, them announcing you as a winner of ADCC, I mean, that's going to be a big deal. Joe Rogan's going to go absolutely bananas. He's going to love you for it. You know, one thing I wanted to know, 
judo obviously has a big emphasis on submissions as well. Will you be doing a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu training or will you, will you just be focusing on judo? I'm uh, focusing most. Um, right now, I'm training in the afternoons, uh, doing judo in the afternoons um, with with the... Um, actually, it's funny because uh, uh, my, my coach, my coach, my... my the guy is my coach today. We used to be competitors back in the days, mm. and and he today is my coach. He's mm. my judo coach. But you know, a long time ago we used to compete, and uh, and he's just always playing jokes with me. He's like, man, <laughs> I'm all fat and and old, and I feel old, and and and, and I see you now. I'm coaching you. You know, it's yeah, I feel funny, mm. but you know, kind of like he's just joking around. Mm. But um, <laughs> like he, you know, he today is my coach, and and so. Afternoons, I train with him, and in the mornings, I do grappling and uh, uh, BJJ at the ATT. Yeah, well, you'll be competing in the under 99 kilogram weight class. Um, given that you fight as a welterweight in the UFC, but you've expressed interest in fighting again in middleweight, how much do you think you'll weigh at ADCC? Well, I, want, I wanted to um, compete in the lower class, but... Um, everything was taken and so they you know the only place that was available it was that weight class um but i was so excited to to be part of the such a big bigger tournament and then i would say yes you know i will compete in 99 but um it's gonna be fine i'm i i, I know it's such a, like it's, it's not a big deal for me like um 99 or 88 or 77 as long as i'm competing i'm happy and um it's gonna be the same goal for me. I'm gonna try to win the tournament. I'm curious. How, how much do you think you'll weigh on on the day of competition? Uh, it depends. Um, start doing some weight. Uh, probably I would weigh around 92, 93 kilos. Wow. That's a, that's a big Hector Lombard. Now, uh, <laughs> Hector, grappling enthusiasts, will, you mentioned it's a big event. It is a really big event. Grappling enthusiasts will be excited to also see super fights between Matt Hughes and Henzo Gracie, Andre Galvao and uh, Roberto Cyborg, and Mario Sperry versus your coach at ATT, Ricardo Liborio. This is ADCC. I mean, maybe it's an obvious answer, but which one are you most excited for? Of course, uh, I'm, I'm more excited for um, um, my coach, Liborio, and... Mm. You know, versus uh, um, another um, legend of the sport. Um, but um, I, obviously, I want my course to win. And you know, see those two like they 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 have put so much in so much in the sport. I remember, when I was I was a young kid, and and I used to watch those guys grappling and all that. And, and seeing my coach training every day, you know, it gives me it gives me a motivation. Like he's almost fifty years old and he trains every day. Mm. Like, wow, I can do that as well. You know? Mm. Yeah, for you know, sure. He, train. he trains every day. He even spars. He spar, he grapples, he coaches. So seeing him like he's almost fifty years old, doing all that, I'm like, I should not even complain for my age today. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we're going to ask you a couple of fan questions in a second. But before we wrap this part of the interview, I'm just wondering, have you enjoyed helping out your team in the Ultimate Fighter this year? I mean, it's ATT versus the Black Zillions. And, you know, you've been in the background and working with some of the guys um, in the gym. How much have you enjoyed helping out some of those guys in your team? Oh, I decided it wasn't that enjoyable. I mean, it was painful. Mm-hmm. I mean, seeing, seeing my 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 my, my, my my friends losing, um, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't enjoyable at all. But, um, you know, uh, at the end, we all ended up happy. Yeah, of course. And of course, you can't say what's going to happen. It's only up to episode five. But just wondering, what did you think of um, Tyron Spong there? Um, th- he had a bit of a go at your team for using the sauna. Um, obviously, they disconnected the sauna in the other change rooms. So they had no choice but to use it. I don't know if you saw that episode, but what did you think of his reaction to your team trying to use the sauna at the Black <laughs> Zillion gym? Well, um, it's, uh, it's like um, it's like what just happened to me. I mean, uh, you have to be responsible for whatever happened to you, right? And uh, I think that um, you should be responsible and made the way. Um, and you no, know, it's kind of like rushing at the end, uh, giving to time and spawn the 
you know, the, that opportunity to uh, take advantage of it because at the end of the day, when you and Wool, you know, um, <clears throat> it's like basically what, what happened to, to the Australians in the parade, you know what I mean? In the parade over there, I mean, you on the front line, you know, they're not going to care. They're just going to kill you because mm. you, you, you and Wool. So when you and, and Wool, everything goes. And what I'm, what I'm, what I'm meaning with this is that um, if you don't, two teams they're competing against each other, you know, whatever advantage that you want to get, that you that you that you can get, you're gonna get it. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they're facing each other. And um, not that I agree with Tyrone or whatever, but uh, I understand his point because it's like, dude, you know, we're facing each other, so I kind of like I gotta get whatever advantage that I can get to make to make my team member win the fight mm. um so i see it that way um you know uh and it's, it's a very competitive sport and um they're not playing around you know they you know there's just two <laughs> teams they hate each other and um whatever whatever advantage they any of those two they're gonna get they will they will get it i mean um that's the way that i see that i see the whole thing you know um um I think that um, he should be more responsible and make the way before, and, or stay low, low and way, and don't give Tyron the opportunity for, um, you know, for um, which is I don't agree with him, but uh, it is what it is, man. Sure. Now, uh, heck- it's like when you, it's like sorry to interrupt you. It's like when you facing a guy, um, an opponent, and you know he's on the other side, he's in the blue corner, you in the red corner. It's gonna go and it's gonna knock you out, and then you can get upset about it because you want to go and knock him out, but he wants to knock you out as well. Mm. It's a fight, and you, you know you're taking the same. You know I'm taking the same um, uh, situation outside the fight. Like whether they're not fighting or not, there's still um, a fight that's gonna happen. So. Um, you just want to grab whatever is, you know, advantage you can get because it's a fight, it's war, man, you know? Mm-hmm. No, I completely understand where you're coming from. Now, Hector, just to wrap up the interview, we really appreciate you, the time you're giving us. We've just had a few fans send in some questions for you. So we're just going to read you a few of those questions and then we're going to wrap up. So the first one is from Aaron Ha21 or Rana21. Uh, his question is, if pro sports were legalizing Cuba, you know, how do you think they would do, uh, as in Cubans would do in MMA? There seems to be quite a, you know, quite the fight culture over there with uh, you transitioning from Olympic judo and Romero, your old Romero training partner coming from wrestling. Plus, obviously, the boxing goes without saying. So, how do you think uh, you know Cuba would do in MMA if the sport was legalized? I think I think they would they would um they would do uh, great. Uh, it's not much to do in Cuba, so uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure that they would they would focus 100 percent in that sport because um, I find that they they good athletes. The Cubans are good athletes and they have a good gym. So they love the sport. Um, they all watch the UFC up there. Um, and actually, there's a lot of fights today in in Cuba. Mm. This happened a lot of it's, it's a lot it's a lot of um, small organizations that are promoting promoting MMA. Oh so wow! I think they would do well. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know that's 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 awesome. And interested to see if there's more athletes coming out of there. Now, this question we got sent in from quite a few people, Hector. So um, it's a fun one that fans always talk about. I think it's always connected to you. Um, it comes from this one particular person that we chose uh, to mention, Luga. He wants to know: Could you share with us the iconic historic battle that you and Josh Barnett had at a gym here in Australia? Because it seems like everything all uh, all fans want to know is what happened in that gym. Could you share actually, with us what happened? I, I actually been calling Josh Barney out so we can have have a fight in the middle Morris. Mm. That was a follow up question actually. So yeah. yeah go share on. share with us the story of what happened and then let's let's have a discussion about this Meta Morris fight after that. Well what, what happened was pretty simple. I've been telling I told him um it's funny that I call him up after the fight after the one of my bella to fight in front of everybody and then he went backstage and he's like uh what do you call me up i'll call you i'll call you outside and i'll call you now um well, what happened was um i came i came to uh train with um eric Paulson and a uh, bunch of guys down there and um he wanted me he wanted me to start 
fact to him a bit, which is something that I don't do. He, he, he wanted like you to do what? Sorry? Heck, what did he want? Uh, he want? He wanted me to be a sucker, like, you know, you know, like, you know, come to me, you know, always kind of like... Uh, oh, suck up. Okay, uh, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, yeah be submissive to him and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, at the end of the day, he's a man and I'm a man and, uh, you know, he breathes and I breathe and, you know, this... For me, I don't believe that anyone is better than anyone. For me, we all the same. Whether whether you have more success in one thing or another, at the end of the day, you know we you know we are people. So um, that was something that I didn't do. So from that from that day from that day on, um, he didn't didn't kind of like didn't like the didn't like the you know um, my approaching to him because I wasn't submissive enough, um, and I just kind of like treating him uh, normal and. We started sparring, and you know, time started going by. Uh, Fifty minutes, fifty-five minutes. We sparred for about almost an hour, mm. and um, I was, I was, I was beating, I was beating him up, and he was bleeding all over the map. And um, he saw me, he saw me that I didn't quit, and I was start to hit him hard, and he just kind of like left. He left the gym, and um, it's funny because uh, every person was cleaning. He was cleaning the whole gym, blood everywhere, uh, broken nose, whatever. And after that, um, he, he he started hating me even more. Um, one day I remember that I was training with, um, he was training, and there was a bunch of guys. It was um, uh, Jake, King, um, Babalu. Uh, it was it was uh, it was so many of those guys, and, and, you know, all of them his friends, obviously. And I start doing I, I start sparring all of them, and you know after I was doing about six changes, he jumped in. I was tired. He took me down without me knowing that I was you know a, you know a takedown, <laughs> and he was pounding pounding the hell out of me. I was at one point, I, 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 you know, from my mind, from my mind went through like, wow, I'm dead here. Because uh, he was pounding the head at me so bad. So some reason, I don't know, you know, what happened. It was a miracle from God or whatever. I escaped from there. I jumped on top and I started pounding him up. And uh, he's like, oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. And he left again. Oh, wow. So, I mean... That and you know confrontation by confrontation, you know. Um, so it, it was kind of like he couldn't bully me, and that was his biggest issue. And yeah. and then after that, um, I couldn't even get you know get to train because he would call the guys at different time. Um, so I would be at the gym at the gym by myself, and just I just I decided to leave, man. I mean, like it was it was pretty hard for me. Um, you know, obviously, you know he. Uh, he was the big dog in the gym, and uh, he would call the guys, you know, whatever time, Susie, um, Jamie, uh, Babalu, and the rest of them. So they wouldn't show up the time. Sometimes they would train different times. So I couldn't get my training. So I just decided to leave. I came down, I came down to ATT, and uh, the, rest, the rest is history. Mm. Yeah. But that yeah. was actually what, what happened there. And yeah. And he knows it. Uh, he can go and say whatever he wants. Um, Actually, you know, I mean, I'm going to be fair. He's been making good comments about me lately. Um, I kind of like I tried to squash the, uh, the beef between between us. Um, but um, I should tell you what just happened. But, you know, I got no I had nothing against him anymore. Um, kind of like a let it flow. But I do, you know, if, if the opportunity comes and we can, we can compete in a, um, a grappling comb um, with uh, Mena Morris or any grappling comb, I would be more than happy to uh, to compete against uh, Josh. That's for sure. Yeah, well, that's that's the big one. I mean, it's a fight that um, it's a matchup in Metamoris that fans would love to see. I mean, it would garner so much interest. Just wondering, you know, Josh is obviously the big dog over there at Metamoris at the moment. If you guys did get an opportunity to compete against each other in Metamoris in the upcoming Metamoris, how would you see yourself uh, matching up with him? Do you believe you'd beat him in the grappling matchup? 
But, you know, there is a reason why I'm calling, I'm calling him, right? Mm. I mean, no disrespect, but I see myself winning. Um, I, don't see, I don't see him beating me. And, um, you know, I, I hope that uh, one day, you know, Metamoros can make that fight happen. Well, they're all about the big name matchup, so it's definitely something that we'd be excited about. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people, would want to see that. You know, Hector, even though you're not currently, uh, you know, you don't have a fight lined up in the UFC, it looks like you're really busy. You've got the ADCC, you've got the Olympics, and uh, we can't wait to see you come back in the UFC, guys. Don't forget to check out Hector and all of his updates on Twitter at Hector Lombard, and of course follow his journey uh, at ADCC on August 28th to the 30th in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hector, as always, man, it's an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, guys. And uh, um, I, it's, a lot, it's a lot more um, from Hector. And um, I'm grateful that, you know, um, for all the support that Australia has given me. And, um, you know, I will, make, I will make you guys proud. I promise. 